All right, it's the end of the week. That means one more daily fix for you to platinum. You ready for this one? Well, today we have Take Two CEO maybe tossing some shade at Game Pass, and developer Bungie is recommitting to another multi year arc for Destiny, but it might not be Destiny 3. All this in your daily fix. <laughs> Now, earlier this year, Activision confirmed that the upcoming Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will be hitting Game Pass on day one. Now, that's great news for subscribers as getting one of the biggest games of the year essentially for free with a subscription is a pretty good deal. But will this open the floodgates for more AAA games to land on Game Pass on day one? Well, CEO of Take-Two, Strauss Zelnick, says to hold up a minute. Just hold up, hold up now. In an interview with our sister site, gamesindustry.biz, Zelnick said he supports the subscription service model for older titles, but that it doesn't make sense to put a brand spanking new AAA title on something like Game Pass on day one. Now, Zelnick said, quote, that doesn't make sense to us because economically speaking, we don't think consumers are prepared to pay for that. And we can't afford to turn our business upside down in a way that doesn't make sense economically. The Game Pass has been a hot button issue with developers with some seeing a benefit to launching a game on the service and others seeing it as a huge risk. Moon Studios, developer of Ori and the Blind Forest, said on Twitter that smaller devs would likely benefit from taking up front fee and putting their game on Game Pass, but more established studios may find it hard to continuously make money on a project, especially if it's in a, the AAA category like Grand Theft Auto 6 will be when it launches. Now, in regards to Call of Duty coming out to Game Pass, Zelnik thinks it will drive subscriptions up for a period of time, but Microsoft's tactics won't change how Take-Two does things. Now, he said, quote, it won't affect our decisions because our decisions are rational. Ooh, damn, you, you, you throwing shots, my guy. Anyways, I think we can read between the lines here and assume GTA 6 will not be coming to Game Pass or PS Plus or any other service on day one, regardless of what massive upfront fee could be offered to take two. Now we all know Grand Theft Auto 6 will move a lot of copies and a lot of units, but if it were offered to Game Pass, I mean, would it get you to subscribe or, or would you rather just pay the $70 launch uh, price for the game? I don't know how much it's gonna cost. I don't live in the future yet, but we will be living in the future soon when GTA 6 comes out next year. Comment down below, let's discuss this. All right, moving along, uh, that adorable looking Astrobot controller for the PS5 is now available for pre-order. But you gotta act fast if you if you really want that, as it's selling out uh, practically everywhere. And as of this taping, only PlayStation Direct has units for pre-order, with Best Buy, Walmart, Amazon, Target, and GameStop all basically saying sold out when you try to click on it and buy the damn thing. The controller is $79.99 and is scheduled to come out the same day as the new Astrobot game on September 6th. Now, what are you still doing watching this, y'all? Y'all still watching me talk about this damn thing? Go get the damn thing right now, you know, before you have to, like, get it on resale on StockX or, or, or eBay for, like, freaking $200. Go. All right, and for those that, of you that are still here, thank you for staying for the last story because I have one more story, and then you can go buy your, 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 your Astrobot controller. Finally, Bungie wants to clarify that work on Destiny has not stopped despite the mass layoffs that hit the developer last week. However, they're asking fans to be patient. Now, via a post on Twitter, Bungie recognizes that the layoffs may have cast uncertainty about the developer's future. Now, Bungie said, quote, rest assured we remain committed to destiny, to supporting our community with transparency and to delivering regular updates about the game. We'll be talking to you all about the future of Destiny and plans for our next multi-year journey soon. Once we plant a flag for the date, we'll let you all know. Thank you for your patience and we'll see you again soon.
The Destiny franchise's first major storyline, the Light and Darkness saga, began with Destiny 1 in 2014, which encompassed all the game's DLC and continued through Destiny 2 and its DLC, finally ending with the recent expansion, The Final Shape which we loved here at IGN. We, that, that's the royal we. I haven't played this damn thing, but you know, I work here at IGN, so I gotta say we loved it. Y'all know how this works. Anyways, unfortunately, the studio saw a 17% reduction in its workforce and another 155 workers moved to parent company, Sony Interactive. That's about 850 employees remain at Bungie. Now, according to Bloomberg, Bungie could be moving away from large expansions and focusing on smaller, maybe even free updates. And development on the Marathon Revival is said to be still ongoing, believe it or not. And those were your stories for Friday, August 9th. You platinumed it, I'm so proud of you. If I had a trophy, I would give it to you. I'm looking around, I don't have one. I got this Goobler. Y'all like Gooblers? I got this from Comic-Con. Anyways, that's it. If you're looking for something else to watch, check out the latest episode of Next Gen Console Watch. Or catch me on today's Entertainment Fix talking about anime leaks. Y'all y'all know anime leaks? Some anime leaks happen. It hit Netflix and Crunchyroll. I know I don't sound too excited about it because it's sad news. Anyways, thank you for watching this. I'll catch y'all later.